Everybody ready? Y'all ready? Here we go. You clean your teeth? <laughs> Joking. It's all good. All right. Here we go. Hello, my name is Hillary Franz, and I first want to thank our incredible partners and the amazing students who have taken it upon themselves to make their community more livable, more sustainable, and healthier for everyone who resides and works here. These kids spent three months coming out here after school to clear out blackberry and ivy and help plant hundreds of trees. And let me just say, when you hear blackberry and clearing blackberry, that is not very fun. So a very painful job, but one where they rolled up their sleeves and got their hands dirty. The young trees behind us are a legacy that they should all be proud of, where 25, 50 years from now, they can look back and see the gifts of their work. Projects like this uh, one are how we will ensure a better future, a brighter future for everyone involved throughout Washington State, not just for those who are here today, but for generations to come. As we know, trees make our communities healthier and more sustainable. Trees help us deal with the impacts of climate change, reducing air pollution and increasing the quality of life in every community. But across our state, unfortunately, trees are not distributed equitably. Wealthier and wider neighborhoods have greener views, cleaner air, and cooler temperatures. In Seattle, there is a 13 degree temperature difference between a communities of color and low income communities and more affluent white neighborhoods. Hilltop Park, where we are today, is a green dot within a sea of concrete. This 7.4 acre park is the only one in this entire Burien neighborhood. According to American Forest Tree Equity Score map, the lack of tree canopy in this neighborhood ranks it in the bottom 15% of all Burien neighborhoods. Overall in Burien, the only neighborhoods with above average tree canopy are at least 80% white. This trend is not only confined to Burien, we see it across the entire state. Access to clean air, open spaces, and nature should be a basic right. But the reality is that in cities across the state, lower income communities and communities of color more often live in areas with vast swaths of concrete, parking lots, roads, buildings, and extremely limited number of trees and parks. Increasing floods, hotter temperatures, and extreme heat waves combined with the inequitable distribution of trees imposes harsh burdens in certain communities more than others. Anyone who lived here during 2021 in Washington State and experienced the heat dome that settled over the Pacific Northwest remembers how we tragically lost over 112 lives as the temperature climbed above 110 degrees in places. In neighborhoods with larger share of urban forests, we saw temperatures 10 degrees cooler than those neighborhoods without. The fact is, with a changing climate where there is heat, there is now death. At DNR, we talk a lot about wildfire and drought, but the fact is that heat kills more people in the United States than any other kind of extreme weather. The heat dome in 2021 tragically claimed more than 100 lives, and we know that this is not an anomaly, that we will see increasing temperatures, and we will see more communities with less tree canopy having those challenges. And trees are the answer. It's that simple. Not only do trees mitigate heat and prevent heat-related death and illness, trees also trap pollution in our air that cause acute respiratory system, symptoms. Trees reduce pollutants in our water. Trees improve mental and physical health, as we saw very well during COVID, as more and more people were getting out into nature to be able to restore their physical and emotional and mental health. And we know that trees also create economic opportunities. As we see temperatures rise and health and economic disparities widen in our state, trees are no longer a nice to have, they are truly a must have. I believe we have a moral responsibility to address the wrongs of the past where too few communities of color and low income communities had too few trees while others had more. And we have a responsibility to create a better future for all, not just a few. So at DNR, we are taking this huge significant step to truly lead to expanding our urban and community forestry program, growing it from two full-time staff to cover the entire state of Washington to now nine full-time positions. Our team now is helping cities and communities across the state, tribes and nonprofit organizations apply for grant funding at the federal and state level to increase the tree canopy cover in their communities. 
In 2022-2023 fiscal year, we secured $550,000 in grant funding for our urban community forestry program out of the state legislature. That is a 700% increase in investment from previous funding rounds, the most we have ever awarded. It was also the first time state funds were used for this program. Previously, we've had to rely on federal funds. Eight of the projects DNR funded, like this one, are enriching highly impacted communities, neighborhoods in the most need of improved environmental equity and access to green spaces and the human health benefits they provide. But this is barely a down payment on addressing this crisis in our communities, particularly right here in King County. Since 2008, DNR has awarded five grants to projects in the 33rd Legislative District, which includes Burien, SeaTac, Des Moines, and Kent. It's a small number, but still more than the three grants to the 47th District, which includes Arlington and Covington. The next grant we award to the 30th District, which includes Federal Way, will be the first one in at least 15 years. That's why I've asked our state legislature for $8 million to more deeply invest in our community's increasing tree canopies throughout our state. An investment of this size would allow us to help communities with significant inequities in trees, in air quality, in health conditions, and in temperatures. Eight million will support a true tree equity analysis and mapping of all of the neighborhoods in every part of our state. It will assist with tree ordinances to preserve the trees we have currently and also increase the number of trees being planted. It will support the maintenance and health of existing trees and it will plant tens of thousands of trees in communities throughout Washington. And what I'm very proud of, it will establish a conservation core program focused on tree planting, restoration, maintenance, while developing and training the next generation of foresters and natural resource professionals like the students behind me. Our goal is to achieve, uh, to achieve and be the first state in America to achieve true tree equity in every single neighborhood and every community in our state. This critical funding will help us achieve that goal and get on our way and will allow us to maximize our efforts to address the wrongs of the past and create a better future for all of us. That's why I'm very grateful to be here today in Burien to help celebrate the work of these students and the projects and to also launch far more efforts to come in the future. And with that, I want to now take the opportunity to introduce Mayor of Burien, Mayor Aragon, thank you for being here. Thank you for leading this charge. It's an honor to be here and support the great work that you are doing, your council members, and also these students. Well, we are truly honored to have um, Commissioner Hillary Franz with us and our honored guests. And welcome to Burien and Hilltop Park. And let me tell you a little bit about this park and the Boulevard Park neighborhood where we stand today. This neighborhood is one of the most racially and culturally diverse areas of our city. We have a higher proportion of people living in poverty here than other neighborhoods. And there are also fewer trees here than other parts of our community. Near SeaTac Airport, neighbors here feel the effects of airport noise and pollution. Many of the families in this neighborhood are even more vulnerable to that pollution and broader climate change because of underlying health disparities caused by historic and systemic disinvestment and discrimination. Over the last few years, the city of Burien has worked with neighbors and community volunteers and youth to transform this park into a place where local families can play and connect with nature. More than 60,000 feet of blackberry and ivy plants were removed and made way to more than 250 new trees. A vibrant urban forest will now grow around us. This park's transformation is happening through several local and innovative climate job programs, including one that is working with Highline Public School students, some of whom are here with us today, giving them the skills to work in the green job sector. Thanks to funding from the Department of Natural Resources and the Port of Seattle, and partnerships with Earth Corps, Partner in Employment, Forterra, and Highline Public Schools, we are able to offer paid environmental stewardship opportunities to these youth as part of an after-school program. Burien is invested in helping people with all lived experiences find meaningful and rewarding work, while at the same time, helping us advance our climate action and urban forestry goals. Our city currently partners with organizations to support green jobs in more than five city parks. 
This is one of the many examples of local projects that Burien supports as part of our long-term commitment to sustainability and equity. Burien affirmed its commitment to building a climate resilient future through the adoption of our very first climate action plan. Central to that plan was the recognition that climate change is deeply inequitable and its effects compound current vulnerabilities, worsening existing economic, environmental, racial, and social inequities. We know that we need to adopt new strategies to prepare our community for the inevitable threats faced by climate change, while at the same time working to correct existing inequities by investing in our communities, especially our youth. Thank you to Commissioner Franz and to the staff from the Washington Department of Natural Resources who have provided so much support for Burien's innovative programs. Your leadership and the collaboration of partners we see here today is very much appreciated. We hope other cities will join Burien in combining environmental stewardship with programs to advance equity and economic justice. Neighborhoods like Boulevard Park deserve to experience the benefits of investments in climate resilience and economic empowerment. And together we can create a greener future for our region. So I'm pleased to welcome to the podium another one of our partners, Mr. Scott Logan, Chief Operating Officer of the Highline School District. All right, thank you everyone. Uh, it's an honor, first of all, to be here today representing Highline School District uh, in partnership with all of the people you've just heard from. We have, uh, got it? It's, uh, you know, it's an honor to, to have the, the commitment and willingness to have the Department of Natural Resources, the Port of Seattle, the City of Burien, um, all of our urban forestry partners that you've heard about today uh, to work with the district, work with the students. There's a, there's a unique opportunity here uh, when students, uh, when youth discover, first of all, their voice, second of all, the strength of their voice, and the realization that they can make things happen. That doesn't just affect that day and that project that they're working on. That, that's then a trait that they carry with them out into their adult life and continue to build good things for the rest of the community and the rest of the world. There's, uh, there's solid evidence that there's benefit to children to have clean, open uh, space, park space, areas where you can get out, get some fresh air, but also uh, intermingle with nature, with the trees. There's, there's uh, proven studies that, um, you know, whether you believe in standardized testing or not, that there's an actually a, a, a more positive influence uh, a larger influ positive influence as a result of having good, safe, uh, open park space uh, in, in bringing up grade point averages, bringing up test scores uh, that offsets the impacts of, of poverty, the impacts of uh, some of the negatives that, that the youth don't have a choice in, that, they're, that this is the world they're in. So um, there, this is a win from so many directions to be able to have this kind of partnership. We've got uh, some completed projects um, in, in this group with, uh, we did Highline High School, they did a project here, Big Picture, and uh, Evergreen as well. Uh, one, one example, not directly tied to this, but of student voice, uh, we built a brand new Highline High School. It's powered, it's heated with an all-electric driven hydronic heating system. Students watched the progress as we built. The, the environmental club at Highline High School said that they would like to see solar power on that school. The students set out to write grants to bring in part, community partners, uh, state partners, national partners, wrote enough grants to build a 100 megawatt uh, solar array on the roof of that school. That's the largest solar array you can have without getting a license as a power generator. So, um, you know, that's what's, that's a sample of what the student voice can do. There's, uh, there, there, I, can, I can go through all the notes I have here and talk for quite a while, but I don't think everybody wants to hear everything I have to say um, about this. I'm happy to share after the fact. It is truly an honor to be standing here in front of these students, and uh, and I would like to at this time welcome Monse Trinidad Bayo up here to the microphone. Monse. Yeah. 
Hi. <laughs> um, I'm Montserrat Trinidad Bello. I've lived in Burien my whole life and go to Highline High School. I really like being outside, and during the, quarant the COVID quarantine, me and my dad um, went hiking as a bonding. And I didn't really know much of the outside. I didn't really know much about plants, but it was just really nice to discover and see new views with him and have these little memories. <laughs> We noticed a bunch of different plants, but we didn't really know what they were for or what they did. We just saw green and assumed that it was all healthy. Um, it's cold. <laughs> well, um, well, being in Highline, I've participated in some other few um, outdoor activities, and I've been a leader in the Hilltop Park program. Um, I've always appreciated nature. I've always liked being outside, playing with the mud, eating with the mud. The basics. <laughs> um, I don't really. I didn't really know much. I just knew that just green meant alive <laughs> and brown meant dead. Until so coming into this program, I seen that um, now my perspective has changed, and not everything is what it seems like. I realized that the ivy everywhere is killing most of our native plants, and other weeds are causing a bad environment for the healthy plants. <laughs> when I first came to the um, Hilltop Park, I saw how much garbage there was and how much dying plants there were, and it made me mad and sad. After working for two weeks in this program, I realized that there's a lot of potential in this park, but also that it's gonna take a lot of time, work, and effort, especially from us and just everyone, the community. Taking part of this program made me realize that it's important for young people to get paid and learn about this since it's really important because it's their time and it's their effort. Getting to lead the middle school students in this program showed me to be responsible and built patience, which I'm really bad at. And I also know it's going to help me in the future. I'm still in high school and I'm not sure what to do. I'm thinking about marine biology or forest, forensics. Forensics? Sign, sign, forensics? I think that's how you say it. <laughs> I've learned in this program a lot as responsibility and time management, which I'm not good at either. But I know that it's going to help me and I'm going to grow in the future. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much, Monse. That was great. Um, we would like to have our students give a little bit of uh, information about the program that they did, some of the specifics. So we're going to move right over here. We're going to stay in the sun. So find that sunny patch right there. We're going to head this way.